In November 2024, NASA announced 13 candidate landing regions for Artemis III at the lunar south pole. Each region contains multiple landing sites where astronauts could touch down. But here's what makes this announcement urgent. China's Chang'e 7 mission, confirmed for 2026, will survey these exact same regions. And their Chang'e 8 mission in 2028 isn't just exploring. According to Wu Viren, chief designer of China's lunar program, it's testing technology to build what they call the International Lunar Research Station. Both superpowers are racing to the same lunar real estate. And according to international space law, while no one can own the moon itself, the first to establish operations will set precedents that could last centuries. The next four years will determine whether the moon becomes humanity's shared resource or a first-come, first-served gold rush. And based on the evidence I'm about to show you, one nation has a significant lead that nobody's talking about. The real stakes. Let's understand what these 13 regions actually mean. NASA selected them based on four criteria, all publicly documented. Continuous sunlight for at least 6.5 Earth days. Slopes less than 15 degrees for landing. Permanent shadow nearby for water ice. And Earth visibility for communications. These aren't random spots. They're the only places on the moon where a permanent base makes sense. The regions NASA identified, and these are their actual names, include Shackleton Crater, Hayworth, Noble Rim, and de Gerlach Rim. According to data from NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, which has been mapping since 2009, Shackleton Crater alone could contain 22 billion kilograms of water ice. That's not speculation. That's published in the journal Geophysical Research Letters. Now here's where it gets interesting. In April 2024, the China National Space Administration announced their own target regions. While they didn't name all of them, state media confirmed Shackleton Crater is their primary target. Both nations want the same real estate. The Outer Space Treaty of 1967, which both nations signed, says no country can claim sovereignty over celestial bodies. But Article 9 allows for zones of operation to avoid harmful interference. The Artemis Accords, which NASA promotes, interprets this as safety zones around equipment. China and Russia haven't signed these accords. They're developing their own interpretation through their joint lunar program announced in 2021. What makes this a race isn't just prestige. According to a 2023 study by the Colorado School of Mines, Lunar water ice could reduce Mars mission costs by 70% if used for refueling. The peaks of eternal light, mountains that receive near constant sunlight, are limited to about four locations at the South Pole. Control these peaks and you control power generation for the entire region. Verified evidence. Let's examine what each nation has actually accomplished and what's confirmed for their timelines. China's track record is documented. Chang'e 3 successfully landed in 2013. Chang'e 4 achieved history's first far side landing in 2019. Chang'e 5 returned samples in 2020. Chang'e 6 returned far side samples in June 2024. That's four successful lunar landings in 11 years, according to presentations at the International Astronautical Congress in October 2024. Chang'e 7 will include an orbiter, lander, rover, and mini flying probe. James Head, a Brown University scientist who collaborates with Chinese researchers, confirmed the flying probe is designed to investigate permanently shadowed regions, something NASA won't have until Viper launches, currently delayed to 2025. Chang'e 8, scheduled for 2028, according to CNSA Deputy Director Bian Jigong, will test in situ resource utilization. The China Academy of Space Technology published papers showing they're developing 3D printing technology using lunar regolith simulant. This isn't secret. It's in peer-reviewed journals. Now, NASA's timeline from their own announcements. Artemis 1 flew successfully in 2022. Artemis 2 is scheduled for September 2025, a flight around the moon with crew. Artemis 3, the landing mission, is officially no earlier than September 2026, 
according to NASA Administrator Bill Nelson's November 2024 statement. But the Government Accountability Office report from December 2023 states, 2027 or later is more realistic based on current progress. Here's the critical technology gap. SpaceX's Starship needs to transfer propellant in orbit to reach the moon. Elon Musk confirmed in October 2024 that this requires 10 to 15 tanker flights. They haven't demonstrated this once yet. The first test is planned for early 2025. China's Long March 10, their crewed lunar rocket, uses conventional staging, no orbital refueling required. Ground tests began in 2024. The budget tells another story. NASA's Inspector General reported Artemis costs through 2025 will reach $93 billion. China doesn't publish exact figures, but analysts at the Center for Strategic and International Studies estimate their entire Chang'e program from 2007 to 2028 at roughly $14 billion, even if that estimate is half the real cost. They're spending far less per mission. Honest Capability Comparison Let's compare what each nation can actually do today, based on demonstrated hardware. Launch Vehicles NASA's SLS has flown once successfully. It can launch every 12 to 24 months based on current manufacturing rates, confirmed by Boeing. Cost per launch, $4.1 billion according to the Inspector General. China's Long March 5, operational since 2016, has launched 12 times with 11 successes. They're producing 6 to 8 per year. Cost is estimated at $100 to $150 million per launch, though this is unconfirmed. For crewed lunar missions, NASA requires SLS plus Starship HLS. China is developing the Long March 10, with engine tests confirmed in 2024. Their official timeline shows crewed capability before 2030, though industry analysts suggest 2029 to 2030 is realistic. Landing technology. NASA's approach requires astronauts to transfer from Orion to Starship in lunar orbit. This adds complexity, but allows for a larger lander. China's approach, shown in official animations, uses direct landing like Apollo, simpler but with less cargo capacity. Trade-offs exist for both approaches. Life support is where claims get exaggerated. NASA's current Artemis suits and life support are designed for short stays, days, not months. China has stated goals for extended missions, but hasn't demonstrated long-duration lunar life support. Both nations have experience with space station operations, which is relevant, but not identical, to lunar surface needs. Power generation shows a real difference. NASA's current plan uses solar arrays. The Artemis III design includes a 10-kilowatt vertical solar array system. This works at the peaks of eternal light, but nowhere else. China announced in 2022 they're developing a nuclear reactor for lunar use, targeting one megawatt. However, developing doesn't mean ready. Nuclear power in space is extremely challenging. International partnerships reveal different strategies. NASA's Artemis Accords have 45 signatories as of December 2024. But only a few contribute hardware. ESA provides the service module. Japan is developing a pressurized rover. Canada provides the robotic arm. China's International Lunar Research Station has fewer partners. Russia, Pakistan, UAE, Belarus, and others. But Russia brings significant experience from their Luna program. Realistic Implications If China establishes a permanent presence first, what actually changes? Let's separate likely outcomes from speculation. Legal precedent is real. The first operational base will test interpretations of the Outer Space Treaty. How large can safety zones be? Who decides interference? These aren't hypotheticals. They're questions international space lawyers are debating now. Michelle Hanlon, co-director of the Air and Space Law Program at the University of Mississippi, states first actors will heavily influence how these zones are defined. Resource access matters economically. A 2023 study by consulting firm McKinsey 
estimates the lunar economy could reach $100 billion by 2040 if water ice extraction becomes operational. But this requires massive infrastructure investment with uncertain returns. Government-backed programs have an advantage over commercial ventures here. The technical knowledge gained is valuable regardless of who arrives first. Learning to extract water, generate power, and manufacture materials on the moon applies to Mars and asteroid missions. Both nations will advance these technologies. The question is, who commercializes them first? Diplomatic influence follows space achievements. After China's Chang'e 4 far side landing, Saudi Arabia, UAEE, and Thailand increased space cooperation with Beijing. Space success translates to Earth partnerships, though it's hard to quantify the exact value. The military implications often get overstated. Yes, the moon is the high ground, but the Outer Space Treaty prohibits weapons of mass destruction in space. Both nations are developing space situational awareness capabilities, but turning the moon into a military base would require withdrawing from treaties a massive diplomatic cost. Economic models differ significantly. Chinese state-owned enterprises can operate without profit pressure. NASA increasingly relies on commercial partners who need business cases. This isn't necessarily an advantage for either side. Commercial innovation can outpace government programs, but government backing provides certainty. The milestones that really matter. These are confirmed upcoming events that will indicate who's really ahead. 2025, SpaceX's first orbital refueling test. Success is essential for Artemis 3. Failure means minimum one-year delay. February 2025, Artemis 2 launches with crew around the moon. Any issues could delay Artemis 3 beyond 2027. Early 2026, China's Chang'e 7 launches. If successful, they'll have detailed South Pole surveys while NASA is still preparing. Mid-2026, NASA must announce the specific Artemis III landing site from the 13 regions. This reveals their strategic priorities. 2025, Viper rover launches to survey water ice at the South Pole. This data helps NASA select final landing sites. 2027, China conducts uncrewed tests of their new Long March 10 rocket. Success means crewed missions become possible by 2029. 2028, Chang'e. Eight attempts to demonstrate resource extraction. If they produce water or oxygen on the moon, it's a major technological milestone. Watch for these indicators. Launch facility construction. Both nations are building new pads. University research funding indicates priority areas, and international partnership announcements shows diplomatic momentum. Budget allocations matter too. NASA's 2025 budget request for Artemis is $7.6 billion. China's space budget is estimated at $12 billion total, though lunar program specifics aren't public. Congressional funding decisions and Chinese policy announcements will signal commitment levels. Conclusion. Here's the honest assessment. China has demonstrated more recent lunar landing experience and simpler technical architecture. NASA has superior heavy lift capability today and stronger international partnerships. China is more likely to establish sustained robotic presence first, probably by 2028 to 2029. NASA will likely achieve crewed landing first, possibly 2026 to 2027, but sustained presence may take longer. The real race isn't about planting flags. It's about who can extract water, generate power, and manufacture materials on the moon. Both nations are probably 10 to 15 years from true self-sustaining bases, despite optimistic timelines. The winner won't be who arrives first, but who stays permanently. This competition, unlike the 1960s space race, isn't zero-sum. Both nations advancing lunar technology benefits humanity. The risk is if competition prevents cooperation on safety, resource sharing, and scientific data. The moon is big enough for multiple bases, if we can figure out how to share it. What's your take? Will competition drive innovation, or should nations collaborate on lunar development? 
How should safety zones be defined? Who do you think achieves sustained lunar presence first? Comment below with your predictions. Subscribe for updates when major milestones happen.